Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a library of your element types in Revit using Revit API and Python. So here's my Revit project. And if you go to EF Tutor, I have already prepared a button which is called Create Library of Elements. If I'm going to open it, at the moment it's very simple. I have just a name and description of the button. Then I specify the context to be active floor plan, which means that if I'm going to open any other view except for the floor plan, it's going to be deactivate the button. Then I'm importing everything from Revit database. I'm getting regular variables such as doc, UI doc and app. Then I'm getting active view and level because we're going to use it for some of the elements. And I already got all the wall types, floor types and text types because these are the types that I'm going to create a library for in this video. So when we create such library of element types, we need to keep track of where our point is positioned and then increment values of X and Y depending how we want it. First of all, let's define the zero point, which is going to be our origin. X is equal to zero, so is Y, so is Z. So I'm going to start by creating the text types and I'm going to increment Y values so each next text type is getting lower and lower and lower. So we're going to say text types for text type in all text types. So first of all, we need to create a point where our text node will be placed. I'm going to call this point origin and by using XYZ class, I'm going to provide X, Y and Z values that we have defined right here. And now we can decrement, for example, Y value because I want it always to go down. I'm going to say y minus equals, uh, let's say two for this example, we can adjust it later if needed. And now we need to create text node itself. I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it create text here in the functions area. I'm going to write define create text. It's going to take an origin and it's going to take text type. Let's make a doc string function to create text node at the given location. Then I'm also going to add that text type name is going to be used as a text, right? So to create a text node type, if you're going to go to Revit in EF Tutor, in YouTube Lessons, in 05, you can see there is create, delete and copy elements. In one of the previous video, I showed you how to create a bunch of different elements. And if you're going to open it, which I have right here, in here, we can copy these few lines, which shows how to create a text node. So come back in here, paste it, uncomment it. And in this case, we pretty much needed just this line because the text type we don't need, we have it right here. The point we also don't need because we have the origin provided going to be here instead of and instead of text we're going to get the text type and get its name i'm going to create variable text and i'm going to return it somewhere in the future we might reuse this function and we actually need to do something else with the text so for now it's good uh, in here i need to provide our origin and text type oh and lastly we need to create a transaction because we are modifying our project so i'm going to write here transaction start then somewhere in the bottom i'm going to do the same and write transaction commit okay that should be enough Let's go to Revit and try to run it and see if it works. And you can see it has created all the text types in, available in our project. So the next step is that I want to place all the wall types somewhere right here. Before we're going to start doing this, you can see that we need to re reset our Y value so it goes back to zero. And we also need to increment X value so everything moves. I'm going to come here. I'm going to say Y equals zero and X plus equals. Let's start with 15 and then we adjust if needed. So for the walls, I'm just going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to replace everything to wall type. And I need to create a new function, which is create a wall. Let's come back here, write define create a wall. It's going to take origin and wall type, maybe something else, but we're going to look in a moment. Create a doc string and I'm going to write function to create wall type at a given location. Same as text node, I'm just going to come in here, have a look at the walls. Fortunately, this snippet is not going to work for us because in here it takes default wall type and we cannot specify it. So we need to go to Revit API docs and have a look. Version 20.21. In here I'm going to write wall. Then in methods, I'm going to go to create method. So the snippet that you saw, we used this method and we actually need to use this one because this allows us to use specific wall type, height, offset and so on. So let's open it. That's a lot of arguments. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. So I'm going to paste it somewhere here. Now let's create wall equals wall create. We need a document, curve, wall type ID, level ID, height, offset, flipped, and structural. From here, we can take this part right here, which is point start, end, and curve. I'm going to use origin as our point start. And for point end, I'm going to increment X value so it goes a little bit to the right. So origin X plus 2, then origin Y, and origin Z. Then it's going to create a curve and we pass it right here. Then for wall type ID, I'm going to take wall type and get its ID. For level ID, I'm going to use the active level, which we're getting right here, and get its ID. Then 
H is gonna be like 10, doesn't matter. Offset is gonna be zero. Flip is gonna be false. And structural equals false as well. And lastly, return wall in case you wanna do something else with it. Right, so let's have a look. Yeah, incrementing X, setting Y to zero. We changing Y every time we create a new one. I think that should be fine. Let's go to Revit and have a look. I'm gonna delete previous wall and create library of elements. And voila. Let's go to annotate. We also can tag all of the walls. And I can see all available wall types and all available text nodes in our view. Lastly, let's go and create the same for the floors. I'll clean this up. So by now you already understand that we just copied this whole thing. I'm gonna change it to floor type. It's gonna be floor type in all floor types. Origin is the same. And we're gonna create a function called create floor. And it's gonna take origin and floor type. Now I can scroll up. I create here a create floor function. It's gonna take origin and floor type. Uh, let's copy the same doc string function to create floor at the given location. And I'm quite sure that we can copy the whole thing from here. If you scroll here, how we create our floors, copy, paste, and I just need to adjust very little. We don't need to get any floor types. We have it from here. We just need to specify our origin. So I'm going to use the bottom left corner as my origin. And for the rest, I'm going to use the same values as origin uses. And then I'm going to increment X and Y as I need. For example, in here, I need to increment X by one. Then in here, I need to increment X and Y. And in here, I just need to increment Y. So getting our points, we're creating lines for each of the points. Then we combine it into a curve array. Also notice that this is how you create floors in Revit 2021 and up to 2022. Starting from 2022, they introduced a new method. There is instead of curve array, I think you need to use something like loop array or something along this line. So this is going to work well and we're going to return new floor. Now we're going to go down. And I think that should be enough. We'll go to Revit, EF Tutor, click on Create Library of Elements. And here we go, task created. Let's also tag all of them. I'm going to tag all the walls and floors. And there you have it. And this is how you can create a library of your element types. Even though in my example, I only showed you the text nodes, walls and floors, you have seen that there are a lot of similarities in the way it works. Just need to change the position where we're going to create our element. And then we need to create an appropriate function to create such element category. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new for yourself. And if you have any other ideas what you want me to explain to you, just write down in the comments in Patreon, in YouTube, write me in LinkedIn, doesn't matter. Just let me know. So happy coding. Goodbye.